is my sight Now I found the light After those long dark nights Now my world is bright Islam is my sight Now my world is bright Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الرسول الصادق الأمين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear brothers and sisters in Islam from every corner of the world Welcome to a new live episode of our program The Straight Path As always it is a great honor and a great pleasure for me to be with you live this evening and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as always to make this next hour an hour of his remembrance, an hour of seeking his forgiveness, and an hour of coming closer to him by either learning something new about our beautiful deen al-Islam or at least being reminded of something that we already know but we had forgotten. And uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as always inshallah to make this program like this. Tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, we are talking about Ramadan's bonuses. What do you mean by Ramadan's bonuses? That's what we're going to figure out, inshallah, throughout this next hour. But let me begin by reminding you, we are only 13 days away from the beautiful month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. Less than two weeks. Less than two weeks, my dear brothers and sisters, from being in the beautiful, beautiful month of Ramadan, the most beautiful month of the entire year the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness, the month where the gates of Jannah are wide open and the gates of the hellfire, if we can say it appropriately, are wide shut. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who witness this beautiful month of Ramadan. And as we've been making dua for the, for the past two months or so, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. O oh Allah, allow us to witness Ramadan. O oh Allah, give us the chance to be amongst those who witnessed the beautiful month of Ramadan. Yesterday I was uh, on a bus and uh, I heard the person next to me talking to another person. And he said to him, is Ramadan near? Is Ramadan getting closer? SubhanAllah. This person is only less than two weeks away from the beautiful month of Ramadan and he's still asking when Ramadan is. He doesn't even know. He has no idea what month we are in the year. Uh, of course, as we said, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Ameen, and we discussed last month, we are in the beautiful month of Sha'ban, and we talked in a previous episode about the great merits of the month of Sha'ban and how it is the month of preparing for the beautiful month of Ramadan. So inshallah, as we continue being in this beautiful month of Sha'ban and as we approach being less than two weeks away from the beautiful month of Ramadan, we need to remind ourselves. We need to remind ourselves about the greatness and the great bonuses that we are approaching and that we are coming close to in this beautiful month, the month where there is Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about it, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. This night, the night of Qadr is, subhanAllah, better than a thousand nights, a thousand, a thousand months, I apologize, a thousand months, the worship in this one night, this night of Laylatul Qadr is better than the worship of 1,000 one months. SubhanAllah. But see, my dear brothers and sisters, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the great opportunity to, to be amongst those who reach Laylatul Qadr, who understand and who get rewarded and who their work gets accepted on Laylatul Qadr are not those who do nothing before it and then come in the last 10 days of Ramadan or maybe on the tw 27th night of Ramadan and start to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that one night or for those few odd nights. But they are the ones who prepare way ahead, even before Ramadan begins. And even if they fail to, to prepare for Ramadan a month in advance, at least they prepare days in advance. And this is where we are. See, my dear brothers and sisters, just a little while ago, we were talking about Rajab. And then in another episode, we talked about the month of Sha'ban. And now we're talking about the month of Ramadan. Time is flying. And the days are passing by very fast. The days approaching the month of Ramadan are passing fast. And when the days of Ramadan come, they will pass even faster. They will pass even faster. So please take advantage. Take advantage of this great and beautiful month that you may never get to see again. Or that you may never get to see even this year. 
I know uh, a leader in, uh, in a Muslim community that I used to live in a few years ago. I just received an email a few days ago that he passed away. And he was a person who was preparing on the personal level for the month of Ramadan and on the community level for the month of Ramadan so that he can get the community prepared, so that he can know what kind of activities they're going to be doing during the month of Ramadan. As the brother said, he was just in a meeting talking about the plans for the month of Ramadan. And then a few hours later, he was dead. Subhanallah. Who knows when we're going to reach this Ramadan and if we're going to reach this Ramadan. And even if we do reach this Ramadan, who knows if this will be the last Ramadan that we witness or what. And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters, I want you to, to understand this is real. This is not a joke. This is not just a, a random reminder about something, you know, that's going to come many, many years in my life. I'm still young or even uh, maybe I'm in my 30s or I'm in my 40s or I'm in my 20s or I'm still in my early teens. There are thousands, and I say it over and over again, thousands of people, my dear brothers and sisters, who die on the night of Ramadan. The night before Ramadan begins, they are dead. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who benefit from this beautiful month and who witness this beautiful month. Usually, as you know, in this program, we conduct a poll and we ask brothers and sisters about their opinions about the question of the day. But this time, tonight, I said no. I'm not going to ask a question. Why? Because I already know the answer. The question was going to be this. It was going to be, are you satisfied with all the previous Ramadans that you have witnessed? Are you satisfied with all the previous Ramadans that you have witnessed? If you were to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask you about your worship during the month of Ramadan and if Ramadan was really a turning point in your life and a point of ultimate change in your life, would you be able to answer and say yes? I'm satisfied with my worship during the month of Ramadan. And the reason that I didn't ask the question, my dear brothers and sisters, is because I already knew the answer. I knew that at least 99% of us, including myself, would say that we are not satisfied with our worship in the month of Ramadan. And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters, we want to make this Ramadan, bi ta'ala, the best Ramadan ever. The most Ramadan where we're concentrating, concentrating on the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concentrating on being amongst those who their necks are freed from the hellfire. And I want to ask you a question in a little bit, inshallah, and that question is, what do you want from Ramadan? What do you want from Ramadan? Because when you know what you want from the month of Ramadan, then you'll be ever better able to prepare for it. But before I ask you that question and give you some possible answers, I want us to take a look at this video. A video where the screen is split in two. On one side of the screen is a person who uses his time very wisely during the month of Ramadan. And on the other side is a person who wastes his time during the month of Ramadan. And take a look at both sides of the screen and see where you have been the past Ramadans or where you want to be in the future Ramadans. Inshallah, let's take a look. Islam is my side. Islam is my side. <laughs> 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 Now my world is bright Islam is my sight Now my world is bright Islam is my sight Ramadan is the month of worship not the month of sleep Ramadan is the month of worship not the month of sleep I want you to imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, if you, in your job, the, your employer said to you this, your employer, your employer said to you, if you work hard during this given month, whatever month it is, if you work hard in this month, we're going to multiply your reward many, many, many times, 700 times or even more. Meaning that for every single dollar that you make, 
you can multiply that by 700 or by even more because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives more to whomever he wishes and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the highest of examples this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering us this is the bonus that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering us during the month of Ramadan that if we worship him correctly and if we make the month of Ramadan a month that is a turning point a month where we not only reap the fruits of Ramadan but we also plant the seeds of change for the rest of our lives and for making ultimate changes in our lives and root changes in our lives then bi'idhnillahi ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us greatly and will free our necks from the hellfire let me ask you the question that I asked you before we watched this video um, what what do you think what is your goal in Ramadan what do you want from Ramadan imagine that Ramadan was a person and that person was standing in front of you and you can ask him whatever it is that you wish anything that you wish what would you ask for what would you ask for from Ramadan let me give you some possible answers not what we want to say but what our actions show and what our true desires show a sister is, is watching right now and she says what I want from Ramadan is to watch the newest soap operas that are going to be coming just for Ramadan. I've been seeing all the advertisements on the different channels, whether they're in, they're in English, they're in Arabic, they're in Urdu or whatever language it is. I want to watch the latest soap operas that are going to be coming in Ramadan. Now, not only do I want to watch one, but I want to watch one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter if it has haram content or if it doesn't or if it negates the, the principles of Islam or it doesn't which of course in 99.9% .9 it does, especially on the non-Islamic channels. But this is what I want to do. I want to watch the soap operas. Another person, what do you want to do during the month of Ramadan? Oh, I want to go out with my friends and spend all the time at night just hanging out in cafes and doing these types of things. And I'll sleep all day so that the day of fasting, you know, of course we're in the summer right now, so the day of fasting is really long and the night is kind of shorter. So what, what will I do? I'll stay up all night and then right after Fajr, I'll go ahead and sleep all day so that I don't feel the heat from the fasting. And another person, their actions, again, maybe not their tongues, but their heart and their actions, this is, this is what they're showing. Another sister, what's your goal? My goal is to make lots of food during the month of Ramadan and to explore all types of new food and to invite people over and I'm getting my house ready and I've been to 10 different stores so I can get all the shopping that I not only need but I want to invite hundreds and hundreds of people. Not with any intention or anything that maybe you want to feed the poor or that you want to bring your relatives closer together but you know just this is a custom that I do. These are different examples my dear brothers and sisters, of what people want from Ramadan. And then comes a person, a person who says to themselves, their heart is speaking this and their actions are speaking this, and they say, what I want from Ramadan is for my neck to be freed from the hellfire. For my neck to be freed from the hellfire and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive my sins. And as our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, he says, doomed he the person who reaches Ramadan and Ramadan is gone and his sins have not been forgiven. Subhanallah. I want to share one last thing with you about the greatness of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always associate the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of Ramadan with fasting, right? We say, okay, this is the month of fasting, the month of fasting, the month of fasting. Therefore, there is a great association between us being freed from the hellfire and us fasting and that is true of course but look at the greatness of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan my dear brothers and sisters there are people who are going to be freed from the hellfire even before they start fasting how even before they start fasting yes even before they start fasting because our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that in every night of Ramadan there are people who are freed from the hellfire. Their necks are freed from the hellfire. And as we know, in the Islamic months, the first day of Ramadan does not begin on the first day after sunrise. It begins from the night before. So on that night before, before people even begin to fast, there will be people who their necks will be freed from the hellfire. Am I going to be amongst them? And are you going to be amongst them? We have to make dua and we have to follow this dua with our action. 
inshallah in the next segment I'm going to be joined by Sheikh Zainuddin Johnson and we're going to be talking ta'ala about the specifically about the great bonuses and the great rewards in the month of Ramadan and would love to have your calls with your questions and comments inshallah either through our landline or through Skype bi'idhnillah so please stay with us my world is bright Islam is my sight Ask Huda If you're still in Mecca or close by to Mecca then you have to know that you are still in the state of Ihram. As long as he, it is not for sale, mm -hmm. then he does not have to pay zakah for it. Forbade praying witter, similar to Maghrib prayer. Mm -hmm. So whoever prays witter three rak'ahs, and sitting after the second rak'ah as if he's praying Maghrib prayer, this is forbidden, this is haram. To euthanasia is permissible with animals, but not with human beings. If an animal is suffering, killing an animal for a legitimate reason is permissible. Both uh, are acceptable, but the majority say that after the rakur is the place of uh, qunut. But both was reported. Have a question or concern on your mind? Hoda TV decided, based on popular demand, it will be bringing you an additional episode of Ask Hoda with Sheikh Asim bin Luqman al-Hakim, live from Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Tech Talk. We're going to look how to create a website and which Islamic websites to actually visit. What inspired you to create your own website? One of the challenges mm. that we, we, we face every day the site or the, the application should be accessible worldwide. I remember uh, when I was younger, um, uh, one of my friends uh, asked me to, to convince his father to, to get him a, a desktop. Even, even the laptop, uh, when, when you come, if you compare both of them in terms of uh, cost, uh, laptop roughly um, cost twice the money if you, if, you, if you compare it with the desktop. Hackers, the word hackers, most of the, the young the youth people are very interesting about that word. They say, hey, I'd like to be a hacker because there is a type of hacker Great, doing great job. We call them a uh, white hat hacker. Fun for everyone. Three, two, one. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? The firefighter uses what to control fire? Water or rocks? Now these two teams go head to head on pulling the blue rope. Now if one person goes over this line right here, the other team loses. Very simple rules. This challenge is worth five points. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Fun is for everyone. So get ready to have some fun. Check out these cool competitions between kids. It's important to have fun and it's also important to be a good sport. So tune in to Fun for Everyone. You don't want to miss it. What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Now my world is bright. Islam is my sign. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to our program, The Straight Path. In this segment, inshallah, I'd love if you can give us a call on our phone lines at 002-0238-555. 248 or 249 inshallah or through Skype on our Skype account Huda underscore TV Huda underscore TV I'm joined in the segment in the studio by Sheikh Zainuddin Johnson from Australia and I'm also joined on Skype by Sheikh Arib Islam from South Africa May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them both uh, Sheikh Zainuddin let me begin with you subhanAllah if you remember about a month ago we were here together on the same set in the same studio talking about Sha'ban approaching. Now we're back here and we're talking about Ramadan just around the corner. Yes, uh, Osama, that's right. Uh, Ramadan for the believer is like an old friend that returns every year. Mm -hmm. The closer we get to Ramadan, 
the more anxious we get and excited to get to greet this great month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed for us. SubhanAllah. And uh, we said during the month of Sha'ban in our last program that we would prepare for this month uh, through fasting and inshallah everybody uh, put their program together in their lives and, and fasted inshallah ta'ala. Uh, Ramadan, as I said, is like an old friend. Those who, who, who are believers, for a believer, it's like an old friend that comes back from, from a distant travel every year and he visits you and as we get closer we become more and more excited and enthusiastic to greet this month of Ramadan. As you mentioned before, Ramadan is the month of fasting and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, the fast has been written upon you as it was written upon those before you so that you may reach piety or so that you may be God-fearing. So the goal of Ramadan or what we should be expecting to get out of Ramadan is that we become more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that we become more God-fearing in our lives even after Ramadan is finished, that we continue to try to avoid the haram things and, and do the halal things and obey the, obedient, the, the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for us to obey. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Osama, he said, Man sama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. Subhanallah. That whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, with belief and asking or wanting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all his previous sins will be forgiven. We're talking about bonuses. What more of a bonus could we have than having our previous sins uh, eradicated? Forgiven. Yes, eradicated, exactly. Subhanallah. Barakallah feek. Sheikh Harib, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How you doing, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, how are you doing, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah, um, I want you to tell us a little bit, in your opinion, why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us so many bonuses during the month of Ramadan? Alhamdulillah, we've given, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we've been given so many opportunities during this month of Ramadan. It is one of the most important uh, periods in our, in our life as Muslims because it gives us a chance to do the four the four R's: <laughs> renew, rewind, recycle, and recommit. Mm. And what I do, what I understand by this is that we have the opportunity to renew our commitment that we have made when we took our shahada, when we came to that realization that we needed to follow Islam properly. It also gives us the opportunity to to rewind, which means we have to have a look at time and how we're managing our time. So rewinding is as in rewinding our time. And recycle, you know, not everything that we're doing has been wrong, but some of the things that we have been doing have been wrong. Hmm. So it's a time to, to look at what things we have been doing that have been wrong and what things we have been doing that are right and recycle the good things and get rid of the bad things. And obviously to recommit ourselves so there are so many opportunities during Ramadan to do all these activities and recommit ourselves in that way. Zakallah khayyam, barakallah feek. Sheikh Zainuddin, what are specifically some of the bonuses, if we can say, you know, of course, if you work at a place, they tell you, well, we'll give you a bonus if you finish such and such project at such and such time, or we'll give you a bonus at the end of the year, or things like that. What are some of the specific bonuses that we learn uh, in, uh, about Ramadan and that we can get during the month of Ramadan? Naam, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The thing with bonuses is that you need to do the work first to get the bonus. Mm. And uh, if we look at the month of Ramadan, we said it was the month of fasting. But it is not only the month of fasting. It is also the month of prayer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Men qama Ramadan. In the first hadith, he said, Men saama Ramadan. Men saama Ramadan. Whoever fasts Ramadan. Uh, mm. In the second hadith, he says, Men qama Ramadan. Uh, Men qama Ramadan. Imanan wa ihtisaban. Ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. That whoever stands in prayer in Ramadan, believing in Allah and 
asking for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of his previous sins will, will be forgiven. Mm. So first of all, we need to do the work to get the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easier for us in Ramadan that the gates of the hellfire are closed, the gates of the Jannah are open, and the shayateen are actually chained up. Yes, they're, they're locked. locked up. Mm. From the beginning of Ramadan, the shayateen al-jinn are locked up. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for the believer to focus on his work, uh, focus on his ibadah. When I say work, I mean ibadah, because ibadah is work, worship. This is work. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity in this month to gain as many rewards as we can. And there are many things that we can do in the month of Ramadan. Even uh, you mentioned about uh, cooking earlier, but also this can be a form of ibadah, a form of worship for the sisters. If they are cooking, at, uh, cooking for guests, sincerely doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this, they will be rewarded for this. Yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has made it clear to us that Ramadan is also the month of prayer, as we, as we just said, and it is the month of Taraweeh. Taraweeh, the Taraweeh prayer, and also the Qiyam al-Layl prayer. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself wa came out of his house in the middle of the night and began to pray in the middle of the night in Ramadan, and some people joined him and began to pray behind him. Then the next night he did the same thing and the people had been talking and they came out and joined the Prophet ﷺ again and more people joined. Mm. The next day lots of people came and they all joined the Prophet ﷺ in this prayer. But on the fourth night the, the mosque was full so much it was overwhelming that people could not even fit inside. Mm. And, but the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't come out that night. He waited until Fajr and he came and prayed the Fajr and he said that your presence was not missed, but I feared that it would become a uh, wajib upon you or compulsory upon you and that you would not be able to do it. Mm. So we sh uh, the Prophet ﷺ shows us the importance of going to the mosque and praying together in the Taraweeh prayer and also the Qiyam al-Layl. So we have extra opportunities to get extra rewards through these acts of worship. Is it true that the rewards in the month of Ramadan are multiplied? The rewards in Ramadan, brother, are, are many. There are so many opportunities to gain rewards. And of course, when you're fasting uh, and also in the blessed month of Ramadan, yes, there is many opportunities for rewards. Also, uh, we mentioned uh, that the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear to us that the month of Ramadan is also the month of Qur'an. Mm. And you might have noticed that there's so many uh, Qaris or so many Qur'an reciters around the mosque that are trying to finish the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Shahr Ramadan alladhi Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an that the month of Ramadan is the month that the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Qur'an so we see that many people are trying to uh, finish the Qur'an and read the Qur'an and focus very much on Qur'an in Ramadan and this is because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taught by the angel Jibril alayhi salam was it was his Quran was revised in the month of Ramadan mm. so every night of Ramadan the angel would come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and revise the Quran with him and in his last year he revised the Quran twice in the month of Ramadan so this is why we see so many people trying to apply the sunnah of finishing the Quran in the month of Ramadan and uh, inshallah ta'ala, I hope that uh, everybody watching and also I hope myself that we can try to apply this in our lives because in the month of Ramadan you find that it's different to all the other months. When, when we're in the other months, some of us we have an hour for lunch when we're working. Yes. And that hour is usually taken up by eating 
And, you know, maybe you pray your dhuhr and then you eat. But now, in Ramadan, we're not eating. So we have time, instead of eating, to read our Qur'ans and to try and understand the Qur'an. And definitely, Ramadan is the month of Qur'an. And we will get reward from this because the Prophet ﷺ has said that every letter of the Qur'an, every letter of the Qur'an is not worth one hasana, but it is worth ten hasana. And that Alif Lam Mim is not one letter. The very first chapter of Surah Al-Baqarah is not one letter, but it's three letters. Alif is ten hasana, Lam is ten hasana, and Mim is ten hasana. So really, we don't even know how much those hasana weigh mm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are, are some great bonus opportunities, brother. Bonus opportunities for us to apply in our lives in the month of Qur'an. Zakallah khairan. Sister Fatma is with us from Kenya on Skype. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister, go ahead. Uh, Do you have a question have or a comment? Okay, I have two questions. My first question is, uh, what is the best ibadah to do during Ramadan? And uh, my second question is, uh, if someone is memorizing the Quran and it reaches Ramadan, is it advisable for her to stop uh, memorizing so that she can complete the Quran many times? Mm. Zakallah khairan, uh, beautiful questions. Uh, she had two questions. The first question is, what if she had to choose one ibadah during the month of Ramadan, what would that be? Or do you advise against that concept? Well, we have, we're already doing many, many ibadah, but uh, reading the Quran, brother, is, is a very important act in the month of Ramadan. Reading the Quran, understanding the Quran. Try, if uh, the sister said she's memorizing Quran, try and read the tafsir of the Quran mm. so that you can understand it in a, in a better way. Uh, also, feeding the poor, brother. Feeding the poor is extremely important in the month of Ramadan. The poor people of this world are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this month. Subhanallah. So, if we, f if we all donate some food or donate some money towards the poor people, this is a good form of ibadah. Ibadah, in a sense, is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is happy with. So, you apply whatever you can, whatever you can do, and everybody is limited to what they can do. Her second question was, um, she's memorizing Qur'an during the month of Ramadan. Should she stop memorizing and focus more on reading and reading the Qur'an multiple times, or should she continue with her memorization? MashaAllah, this is a very beautiful question. Very beautiful question. And Jazaki Allahu Khair, sister. Uh, really, it depends uh, how serious of a Qur'an recite you are, or how serious you are memorizing the Qur'an. Okay, if you're very serious, and you're in a Qur'an school and you are close to finishing, then I would advise to try and, f uh, try and continue memorizing, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, attend the Tarawih and you will be reading the Qur'an with the Imam, okay? But uh, continue memorizing. Uh, but if your memorization is not on the level of you want to be a great scholar or anything like that, then uh, I advise you to uh, uh, continue memorizing a little bit every day, but continue uh, to read your Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. It is, not, it is not compulsory to finish the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. And I want to make that clear. Uh, some people have the misunderstanding that it is compulsory to finish the Qur'an. No, it is mustahab. It is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? But uh, if you're uh, if you're memorizing Quran and you're, for example, in Egypt, I don't know where the sister is. She's in Kenya. In Kenya, okay. Mm. Or even in Kenya. If you're in a program that you've left your home and, and you're uh, memorizing Quran as, uh, as a student, then it's compulsory upon you to continue memorizing because uh, uh, we need more Quran reciters, really, especially sisters. <laughs> Jazakallah khair, barakallah feek. Thank you so much for being with us here uh, this evening. Inshallah, I hope that you'll be with me on uh, my program One Step Closer in Ramadan, ta'ala, and some of the episodes where we try, inshallah, every weekday night to try to talk about a, a topic or an act of worship or something that will, inshallah, get us one step closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I look forward to it, brother.
بارك الله فيك جزاك الله خير اند ماي ديير براذرز اند سيسترز ان شاء الله ان ذا نيكست سيجمنت اي تيل يو ليتل بيت مور اباوت ماي بروجرام وان ستيب كلوزر اند ويل ميك دعاء توجذر اولسو تيك مور اوف يور فون كولز اون اور لاند لاين اور ثرو سكايب ان شاء الله سو بليز ستي وذ اس The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, narrated that when Allah, glory be to him, wishes good for someone, he bestows upon him understanding of the religion and that Allah makes the path to paradise easy for those who seek knowledge. Preoccupied by work or family in the modern world, a Muslim may struggle to find time for acquiring Islamic knowledge. To ease the struggle, we are launching Hoda Academy to be your gateway to online Islamic e-learning. Enroll now and study from our renowned scholars. Learn Aqidah from Dr. Muhammad Salah. Learn Fiqh from Dr. Hatim Al Hajj. Learn Hadith from Dr. Muhammad Saeed. Learn Tafsir from Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan. And learn Arabic from our professional instructors. Successful graduates of Hoder Academy will go through a final test and eventually receive a certificate of completion. To enroll and learn more about Huda Academy, please visit us online at hudaonlineacademy.com. Huda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge. Dear viewers, Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Now my world is bright. Islam is my side. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to our program, The Straight Path. As we discuss today, Ramadan is right around the corner. As I said, 13 days away, my dear brothers and sisters, from this beautiful month of Ramadan. And I have a feeling, inshallah, that 1,433 years after the hijrah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in the year that we're in, 2012, that this Ramadan ta'ala in our lives will be the best Ramadan ever. And it should be the best Ramadan ever because every single year we should strive to be better and we should strive to do our best. Because who knows, even if you do live, I always say maybe you won't live till next Ramadan. Maybe you will live till next Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you a long life. But maybe you'll be too busy. Maybe you'll have a problem that will happen in your life that will take up most of your time. Or maybe you'll have a child, inshallah, like I hope to have uh, by next Ramadan, inshallah, I hope to have a child. So maybe that child, especially if you're a sister, will consume most of your time and you won't be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as, you would, as we, you would like to. Or maybe something else would happen in your life. But this, this Ramadan, we have an opportunity. We have a phone call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Sister from India, Assalamu Alaikum. Sister Galfruz from India, Assalamu Alaikum. Looks like uh, the phone has been cut off, inshallah. Sister, try to give us a call back uh, if you're able to, ta'ala, in the remaining few minutes of the program. And my dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, if you have a question or if you have a comment that you'd like to make, feel free, inshallah, in these remaining few minutes to give me a call on our landline at 002 248 or 249 or through Skype, inshallah, at Huda underscore TV. Huda underscore TV. And as you know, phone calls to Huda TV, alhamdulillah, I mean, are free of charge. Uh, if you're calling through the landline, you would only pay for the international call uh, if you're calling from outside of our headquarters, which are located in Egypt. Because as you know, alhamdulillah, I mean, this is a non-profit channel provided ta'ala for the service of the Muslim Ummah. So feel free, inshallah, to give me a call in the remaining few minutes. Um, as I was saying, subhanAllah, 
this could be our last Ramadan, or it could be not the last Ramadan, but it could be a Ramadan, the last Ramadan that we are free, that uh, we don't have as many responsibilities as we will have next year. And it is only common sense that as we age, especially when we're young and we're approaching um, you know, uh, middle age or something like that, that we do become more busy, either with ourselves or with our spouses or with our children or with life in general and the things that happen in it. So make a vow, my dear brothers and sisters, with yourself and make a vow in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Ramadan, not next Ramadan, not the one after it, not the one in five years, but this Ramadan that's coming up, Ramadan 2012, Ramadan 1433, the best Ramadan ever in your life. And when you make that intention, Wallahi, Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, all you need to do is make the intention. Make the intention and follow it with little action and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you from there. And you will experience the best spiritual environment that you've ever had in your life during this coming up month of Ramadan. <sighs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan the best, the best, the best Ramadan for us with Allah ta'ala. And speaking of Ramadan, in these last few minutes, I want to do, do two things. The first thing is I, I want to tell you about uh, my program during the month of Ramadan. And then the second thing is we want to make dua together with Allah ta'ala. The first thing, as I said, is Ramadan. Bi idhnillah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with the opportunity to be with you in your homes five nights a week live during the month of Ramadan at midnight, midnight Mecca time. So after you come back from Taraweeh, inshallah, we, want, we wanted to make it at a time where we're able to fit all the different time zones, as many, of course, as we can of the time zones that we cover. Uh, obviously, it's, it's very hard if you are reaching out to, to the whole world, but uh, at least the, the satellites that we broadcast on. So we wanted to be able to reach our brothers and sisters uh, in, in the Gulf area, our brothers and sisters in Mecca, our brothers and sisters uh, in Egypt, our brothers and sisters in, uh, in North Africa, our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, in Ghana, and all these countries. So we said midnight Mecca time should be the best time. So ta'ala, after you come back from Taraweeh, a little bit after you come back from Taraweeh, or in some countries after you, right after you come back from Taraweeh, uh, you watch this program, ta'ala, what we're going to do is very simple. Every single night, we'll take a topic that we'll talk about that will ta'ala, help us get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is our goal during the month of Ramadan. Let me take uh, this phone call, inshallah, before we make dua. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Rashida from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I want to just want to tell uh, thank you for this great reminder. Um, Almighty Allah gave you a gift, and you use it on the street. Alhamdulillah. Zakilah khairan, sister. Thank you. Thank you very much. And You're welcome. Please for Nigeria, please. Amen, Rabb. Amen. I mean, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all our brothers and sisters in Nigeria. I get uh, a lot of messages and I, I, I'm aware of the situation there. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make things easy for you and to grant you peace and security, especially that we're approaching the beautiful month of Ramadan, inshallah. Thank you very much. Barakallah feek. All right, brothers and sisters, we only have a few minutes left, inshallah. So um, allow me, bi ta'ala, to, uh, to make dua. And uh, say Ameen bi idnillahi ta'ala May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us Inni da'in fa'aminu Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi Li jalali wajhika wa li azim sultanik Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi Li jalali wajhika wa li azim sultanik Alhamdulillah 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 Alhamdulillahi bil islam Alhamdulillahi bil iman Alhamdulillahi bil quran Alhamdulillahi bi ramadhan الحمد لله برمضان الحمد لله برمضان الحمد لله برمضان الحمد لله برمضان اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صل على حبيبنا محمد صل على رسولنا محمد صل عليه في الأولين وصل عليه في الآخرين وصل عليه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا رب يا رب يا ربنا يا قريب غير بعيد يا قريب غير بعيد يا سامع النجوى يا كاشف البلوى يا غالبا غير مغلوب يا رب اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين O oh Allah give victory to Islam and the Muslims O oh Allah give victory to, the Islam, to Islam and the Muslims 
O oh Allah, give victory to Islam and the Muslims. O oh Allah, help our brothers and sisters in Syria. Help our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Help our brothers and sisters in Burma. Help our brothers and sisters in Nigeria. Help our brothers and sisters in Kashmir. Help our brothers and sisters who are suffering in every single part of the world. Help them. Help them, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, they have no one except you. Help them, O oh Allah. And make Ramadan a month of peace and security for every single Muslim around the world and for the entire world. ta'ala, Any part of the world that does not fight Islam, O oh Allah, make it peaceful. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabbi adhal jalali wal ikram, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan, Allahumma ballighna Ramadan. O oh Allah, allow us to witness Ramadan. O oh Allah, allow us to witness Ramadan. O oh Allah, we know that many people die right before the beginning of the month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, give us the chance to witness Ramadan one last time. At least one last time, O oh Allah, give us the chance to witness Ramadan and to be amongst those who are freed from the hellfire. O oh Allah, we know that on every night of Ramadan, some of your servants are freed from the hellfire. Their necks are freed from the hellfire. O oh Allah, we ask you to be freed from the hellfire this Ramadan. We ask you to be freed from the hellfire this Ramadan. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannah. وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ النَّارِ يَا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من أحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك Oh Allah, we ask you for your love We ask you for the love of those who love you And we ask you for the love of actions that will bring us closer to your love Oh Allah, we ask you for your love we ask you for the love of those who love you and we ask you for the love of actions that will bring us closer to your love. Allahumma hadha dua wa minka al-ijaba wa hadha al-jahd wa alayka al-tuklan wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa bik wa sallallahu wa sallam ala habibina wa rasulina Muhammad wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. I'll see you next week with Ibnillahi ta'ala. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After those long dark nights Now my world is bright Islam is my sight Now I found the light After those long dark nights Now my world is bright Islam is my sight now my world is bright Islam is my sight Now my world is bright Islam is my sight Islam is my sight Islam is my sight